what's happening this instant. ABC 11 Eyewitness News at 11 starts right now. Here on the Big Board, we are following what's new and breaking, including the latest check on a potential tropical storm turning south of our coast. Good Sunday evening to you, everyone. I'm Heather Wallica. Joel has the night off. We are also learning about a Fort Bragg connection to President Obama's VA secretary nominee and a real waterworks in downtown Raleigh. But we begin with breaking news. The eastbound lanes of the Beltline back open at Capitol Boulevard after several crashes. This is what it looked like as first responders were arriving. Fortunately, Unfortunately, Raleigh police say no one was seriously hurt. At one point, though, the entire eastbound side of the Beltline was closed at Capitol. Cops diverted traffic onto Wake Forest Road. Here's a live look at I-440 now. They are at the Capitol Boulevard exit. At traffic, as you can see, flowing smoothly again. We'll have the latest updates on this story tomorrow on Eyewitness News when we get started at 4.30. Now to what could be a real threat for us heading into the 4th of July holiday weekend, brewing several hundred miles south of our coast is a tropical system, one that appears to be gaining steam. Liz Horton in the First Alert Storm Center. Liz, how much is this strengthening? Well, it's strengthening a little. We have more on your full forecast in just a few minutes. Heather? A lot of concerns about this one. Liz, keep us posted. As we closely watch this tropical threat, we want to encourage you to download the First Alert weather app. It features an interactive hurricane tracker. Plus, Chris Homan alerts you to any watches or warnings. You can download it now in the App Store or on Google Play. New tonight, tread marks and torn off tree bark, unnerving reminders of a deadly crash that cut a young man's life short. 18-year-old Jonathan Gregory Taylor died last night when his car went careening off Hunting Ridge Road near Tanbark Drive. Tonight, Raleigh police piecing together the minutes and hours leading up to the accident. Angelica Alvarez live at the scene with what we're learning about that part of the investigation. Angelica. Live in Raleigh, I'm Angelica Alvarez for ABC 11 Eyewitness News. A tragic story, Angelica, thank you. Raleigh police also believe speed was involved in a deadly head-on crash from this morning. Investigators say 25-year-old Brittany Ann Phelps died when her car was hit by Christopher Scott Thompson's car. It happened around 2 o'clock this morning in the 500 block of Tryon Road. Tonight, Thompson is charged with misdemeanor death by vehicle. He and his two passengers are recovering from non-life-threatening injuries. Tonight, a Marine corporal accused of faking his own kidnapping, preparing to return to North Carolina. Wasef Ali Hassoun was declared a deserter by the Marine Corps. Tomorrow, he'll meet with a military commander at Camp Lejeune. The commander will decide whether to court-martial him. Hassoun disappeared from his unit in Iraq back in 2004 before later turning up in Lebanon. He blamed his disappearance on kidnappers before vanishing again. Happening tomorrow in Goldsboro, a celebration of life ceremony for a fallen Wayne County soldier. You can remember Private First Class Andrew Sass at 7 o'clock tomorrow night at Stony Creek Free Will Baptist Church. Sass died last weekend during a training exercise in Fort Irwin, California. He'll be laid to rest with full military honors on Tuesday. New tonight, President Obama chooses a man with both management and military experience to lead the Department of Veteran Affairs. Robert McDonald is the former CEO of Procter & Gamble. He's also a West Point grad with much of his service as an Army captain in the 82nd Airborne Division. If McDonald passes confirmation, he'd replace acting VA Secretary Sloan Gibson. Gibson took over following Eric Shinseki's resignation last month. More new developments coming out of Washington tonight. We are expecting President Obama to ask lawmakers for $2 billion tomorrow. The emergency cash is to deal with a surge of illegal immigrants from Central America. It's in response to a rash of undocumented children and adults appearing in the Rio Grande Valley areas and other parts of the southwest border. Now to the battle raging tonight in one Iraqi city that's being overrun by Sunni militants. Iraq's government on the offensive trying to retake the town of Tikrit. We know it better as Saddam Hussein Hussein's hometown. Daria Albinger now with a growing push to reclaim control in a country under siege. The boyfriend of missing teacher Bianca Tanner could be heading back to North Carolina as soon as tomorrow. Angelo Smith Jr. has an extradition hearing tomorrow morning in Chicago. A judge denied his bond on an unrelated charge yesterday. He's accused of contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Smith reported Bianca Tanner missing June 8th. Police are investigating her disappearance as a homicide. 
A popular theme park just a few hours from the Triangle back open tonight after a bomb scare. Authorities shut down part of Bush Gardens this afternoon. Investigators say someone found a note in the England section of the park saying there was a bomb. Visitors in the area were evacuated. Officials never discovered a bomb and reopened the entire park just before six. The Moral Monday movement taking a break tomorrow from the recent rallies on Halifax Mall. Instead, they're organizing a voter registration drive. They're calling it the Moral March to the Polls campaign. You can either come to Davy Street Presbyterian Church at 7 o'clock or you can watch the event online. 15 people were arrested during protests at last week's General Assembly March. There's still a lot more that's new tonight, including our must-see video, a gushing geyser bursting onto the scene in downtown Raleigh. We'll update you on the efforts to reopen West Street after this water main break. Then Toronto's mayor returning from a two-month hiatus. What visible difference you'll notice as he steps back into the public eye. But first, a live look outside the Raleigh Eyewitness News Center, a quiet Fayetteville Street, 71 degrees on this Sunday evening. Refreshing, but we're heating back up and the humidity returns this week. Plus, we're keeping an eye on the tropics. If you're headed to the coast, you're going to want to listen to this one. Liz fills us in on the other side of the break. Stay connected with ABC 11 on Facebook and Twitter. Now, ABC 11 Eyewitness News continues. Nine people recovering tonight after a shooting on New Orleans' famed Bourbon Street. The city's police chief says the chaos happened when two men got angry at each other. Nine people injured in all, including one critically. Bourbon Street is at the heart of New Orleans' French Quarter, home to the massive Mardi Gras celebration. Toronto Mayor Rob Ford is returning to City Hall tomorrow after a two-month leave of absence to deal with his substance abuse. Ford will speak publicly about his rehab stint tomorrow afternoon. While we're used to seeing these images of him, tomorrow we can expect to see a much slimmer mayor. He's said to have lost about eight pant sizes. Ford attracted international attention after acknowledging he smoked crack. It's time now to reveal the must-see videos we think we'll have you talking tomorrow. We begin with a site reminiscent of Old Faithful happening in downtown Raleigh. Raleigh police shutting down part of West Street at P Street this afternoon because of a water main break. Our cameras are rolling as water spewed several dozen feet into the air. We're told the break has since been capped. Crews tell us West Street should reopen before midnight. Well, thanks to a drone, we're getting an interesting view of flooding in eastern Arkansas tonight. This is from Zent, that's east of Little Rock. Trucks and cars making waves as they slowly tread through the flooded roads. At least 10 homes evacuated following the storms. According to radar, at least 8 to 10 inches of rain fell in the area. And it is a big weekend in the LGBT community. Gay pride parade stepping off around the world, including New York City. Rainbow flags lining the streets of Fifth Avenue. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo and Bill, Mayor Bill de Blasio among those marching today. Many of those participating in the pride parade are commemorating the 45th anniversary of the Stonewall Inn riots, which are credited with launching the modern gay rights movement. Here on the big board, we are following what's new and breaking, including new details about a fire at a Wilson tire plant. Good Saturday evening to everyone. I'm Heather Walliga. Joel has the night off. We've also got wild new video of a man riding on the back of a car as it's speeding down a North Carolina interstate. And we are keeping a close eye on the tropics. But we begin with new information about a story that was breaking at six. Fire investigators working to determine the cause of a massive fire at the Bridgestone Firestone tire plant. That's in Wilson. Elena Athens has been gathering details all night. She's back in the Raleigh Eyewitness News Center with what she's uncovered. Elena. New tonight, a Marine Lieutenant Colonel who was just days away from taking over a school at Camp Johnson has died. Camp Lejeune officials say Andrew Reed died yesterday during the run portion of the semi-annual fitness test. The 39-year-old was supposed to assume command of the Logistics Operations School on Monday. The cause of his death is now under investigation. Back here in the Triangle, a somber welcome home for a Wayne County soldier. Private First Class Andrew Sass died one week ago today during a 
training exercise in Fort Irwin, California. His body returned to RDU this morning. Dozens of people showed up, including the fallen soldier's parents, wife and young son, his wife, visibly emotional, shaking the hands of Patriot Guard riders standing at attention. The motorcyclists escorted the soldier's body back to Goldsboro. Good Sunday evening, everyone. I'm Joel Brown. And I'm Heather Walliga. Our crews are monitoring the developing conditions tonight from the coast to here at home. But let's start with where Anna is right now and where she's heading. Meteorologist Steve Stewart leading us off again tonight. Steve? Right now at 6, a Wake County mother's chilling call to police before a standoff that ended with her husband dead. Good Saturday evening, everyone. I'm Heather Walliga. Wake Forest police say they shot Alan Rushton when he charged at them with a knife last Last night, Anthony Wilson has more from those calls and new reaction from neighbors. President Obama praising three Americans tonight for stopping a gunman on a high speed train in Europe. Mr. Obama thanking them for their courage and quick action yesterday. New at six, we're hearing their accounts of the frantic moments on board. What did they see? How did they take down that suspect? With that, here's ABC's Jennifer Eccleston. Less than two weeks, September 3rd, mm -hmm. they open up against Tulane on a Thursday night. Mm -hmm. It's almost here. It's Can't almost wait. here. The yeah. rivalry is going to start heating up soon. All right, Joe, thanks. And the weather looking great tomorrow. Yeah, too. that's right. We'll have a couple more days of really warm weather. And then look at that. And one day in the 90s. That's I think right. we can handle that. We can totally take All that. All right, Liz, thanks. That's going to do it for us tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll see you right back here at 11. Eyewitness News continues online right now on ABC11.com, the ABC11 mobile app, Facebook, and Twitter. Good Saturday evening, everyone. From the First Alert Storm Center. I'm Heather Walliga here alongside meteorologist Liz Horton. So which spots still have to worry about that rain tonight? Well, pretty much all of us off and on will be seeing those scattered showers. All right, Liz, thanks. We'll see you soon and report in about the weather happening in your neighborhood. Download the First Alert weather app in the App Store or Google Play. Click report your weather, submit a photo and show us what you're seeing. Now to breaking news, an expected crowd of 1 million people waiting for Pope Francis in Philadelphia. The city of brotherly love and sisterly affection welcoming the Pope with open arms today. There he is making his way through the streets of downtown. You can see security all around him as he blesses the crowd. We expect the Pope to speak soon at the World Meeting of Families. Philadelphia is the final city on the Pope's whirlwind U.S trip. Even before leaving the airport, he made an unexpected stop blessing a child in a wheelchair. He celebrated mass, then traveled to Independence Hall. The Pope even standing at the same lectern used by Abraham Lincoln to deliver the Gettysburg Address. He shared a message about religious freedom and immigration. Our own Tisha Powell has been on the streets of Philly all day long, standing among the masses, waiting to catch a glimpse. Hey, Tisha. Heather, what a sight there, Tisha. You know, you mentioned this is such a big deal for so many of the people around you. And you said a lot of people traveled a long way just to be part of this historic moment. They did. I, I wanted to make sure they did not miss their chance to see Pope Francis. Heather? Everyone hoping to catch a glimpse of the Pope. Tisha Powell reporting for us live from Philadelphia. Tisha, thank you. And be sure to stay with Eyewitness News for continuing coverage all weekend long from Philly. Now to breaking news, a quiet Wake County neighborhood, the focus of a major crime scene tonight. The Wake County Sheriff telling us a man was gunned down in the 1200 block of Rutledge Landing Drive. That's just south of Nightdale. Elena Athens is live at the scene with what we know about the suspected shooter. Elena? Elena, thank you. Eyewitness News is just getting started. Coming up, we've got the sights and sounds from the NC Pride Festival, plus the major switch involving a controversial clerk from Kentucky. And I'm Heather Walliga, a woman who was inside during that frightening ordeal, speaking out after coming face to face with a thief. Angelica Alvarez is live in the Raleigh Eyewitness News Center with her harrowing story. Angelica? Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump will be back in the Tar Heel State next week. He'll make a campaign stop in Wilmington Tuesday afternoon. Then later that evening, he'll be at the Crown Complex in Fayetteville. Details of Trump's visit and how to get tickets haven't been announced yet. You can look for updates on our website, abc11.com or the ABC 11 mobile app.
Raleigh police are investigating an armed robbery at an apartment complex overnight. It happened around 1.30 a.m. on Bonville Court. Police say four men held up a man at gunpoint and took his wallet. The man wasn't hurt. Right now, there's no clear description of the suspects. And I'm Heather Wallaga. We begin in Garner, where a robbery at a restaurant ended with a suspect in the hospital. It happened at Buffalo Brothers early this morning, and tonight one suspect is still on the loose. That's a person injured in a Cumberland County shooting is out of the hospital and recovering. Deputies say it happened overnight on High Pony Road near Hope Mills. Our crew on the scene tells us the victim managed to get to a home nearby and call for help. Deputies haven't released any information on a suspect or motive. At the Wake Forest teen who was struck in a hit and run last Friday is improving. Family members say 14 year old Andrew Nassianel has a head injury and several broken bones. SNL has autism and ran away from home the night he was hit on Burlington Mills Road. His mother called 911 when she realized he left the house. Authorities are still looking for the driver who is in a black SUV. If you know anything, call police. The Raleigh police are looking for four men who they say held up another man at gunpoint at a Raleigh apartment complex and then stole his wallet. It happened around 1.30 a.m. on Bonville Court. The man wasn't hurt. Right now, there's no clear description of the suspects. A South Carolina girl who contracted a brain-eating amoeba last month has died. The 11-year-old girl was infected while swimming in a river in Charleston County in late July. The organism, which is naturally present in warm, fresh water, can be fatal if forced up the nose. An Ohio teen died earlier this summer after contracting the amoeba at the U.S. Whitewater Center in Charlotte.